We are going to weave a seat in a Danish cord chair. This is the seat that's going to be replaced. One of the first things you want to do is really understand how this seat was woven in there. You may want to take digital pictures or draw hand drawings. Particularly what you want to look at is you have these two parallel lines going back and forth. Count the strands between them. One, two, three, four strands there. One, two, three, four strands there. Here we have five. One, two, three, four, five. And as you go along, it goes four, five. It's basically five, 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 five. There's a four. So just so you have a handle on how that's done. Also in the back, you want to look at the same thing. There's four strands, four. That has five. Four, four, four. There's one with only three, and then four, and then five. Once you have a handle on how it looks, then you want to take the seat out. You can use a razor knife like this, and you'll just make a cut all the way along. Might take a couple of passes to cut it through. You also want to cut all four edges. Be very careful with the razor knife and you'll continue to cut the entire seat We now out. have all four sides cut away. This piece should lift right out. You may have to trim a few pieces that were hanging on. This is a very valuable tool. It's a tack puller. You should be able to pick that up at any hardware store. And what I use that for is to kind of go underneath the material and just get off all the loose pieces that I can. You want to do that on the front and on the back. You can really just do it by hand and you're going to get most of it off. It's not all going to come off because the nails that you see are still in there. Now talking about the nails, you'll see these nails. They're L-shaped nails and we, you can pull them all out, throw them away and get new ones but I would never recommend that. I like to reuse the nails that are in there so I carefully take the Danish cord out and try to save the nails. Use the tack puller, slide it under the nail and just pry it out just a little bit just enough so you can get the material off. Move your way along, pry it out just a little bit and you should be able to get all the material off leaving the nails in there a little bit. Some of them will be bent over. You can pry it up with this tool. It may seem like a lot of work at this time, but it makes it easier later on to not have to replace all these nails. And we're going to work our way all the way across the front and remove all the nail or remove all the material but leaving the nails. We now have all the Danish cord removed from the front rail. You can see that all the nails are still there and they're pulled out far enough that we can get new strands of Danish cord on. Now we're going to remove the Danish cord from the side rails using the same technique. Pry it out just a little bit and take the cord off. You could probably do this with a screwdriver. I've just found that this tack puller works the best after years of doing this. The tool works very well for getting stubborn nails bent out. Once in a while, a nail will bend out so far that it'll break off. At that point, you will need to replace one. In a typical chair, you'll probably replace five or six nails, but you can reuse almost all of them.
you want to leave the nails bent out far enough so you can easily get a new piece of material in there when you start weaving. Here we have the cleaned out chair. I was actually able to save every single nail. It's uh, usually not going to happen. Some are going to be bent too bad or broken and you will need to have a few on hand to replace it. Next we're going to start wrapping. There's two ways you can attach the first strand. The first one is you can just wrap it around a few nails like that and that'll hold it and then we can start wrapping. Now, another way if you read a book on this it will tell you to tack it right here to the inside. So I'm going to tack this one just so you can see how that's done. We're going to bring the Danish cord up from the bottom along the inside edge rail. The tacks are so small I have trouble holding on to them so I use a pair of needle nose pliers to hold it so I can get it started. And that's how you would hold it. I personally never trust one tack. I just picture a couple years down the line something happening and the chair coming unraveled. So I always put in two. Now that it's attached, either by the tacks like I used or by running it down there like I showed you earlier, we're going to come over the front rail from the bottom side like this. We're going to go across to the back rail and we don't want to be tight against the edge. We're going to come up underneath and it's very important that you work from the center and go over the nail to the outside. Not this way, but from the center to the outside. And you're going to come up on the outside. Make sure it's not overlapped back there. You can tell by feeling. If you have to look, go ahead and look. Come back across to the front. You're still not going to be tied up against the outer leg. You're going to come up under here and you're going to go from the outside to the inside. The opposite that you did on the back. Now you're going to come back up over the front. We're going to go back over the back again. And go over the same nail, the same direction. And then you're going to come up on the outside. And you want to make sure back here, if you can get a shot of that, that they're parallel, that nothing's overlapped, and they're tight against the leg. Now you bring that one up to the front, and we're going to fill this gap, and you may want to just push them over a little bit so it's all tight and snug. You're going to come underneath, you're going to go over that same nail plus the next nail. And you're going to come up, and we're going to go back to the next nail in the back. And we're going to go over it from the center to the outside, same as we did before. Not this way, this way. And we're going to come up over the back, make sure they're not overlapped. Come up here, go under, and we're going to go over that nail, same as we did the first one. You want to pull it down tight, and we're going to jump over to the next nail. We continue that pattern going this way, always that way. Back up to here, over that nail, pull it in tight, grab the next nail. While I'm doing this weaving, I'm always maintaining tension. I'm never letting this get loose and floppy behind me. You want to keep it tight, not super tight. It doesn't have to be pulled super tight, just keep it from being loose. We're going to continue this same pattern all the way across. The entire chair. And as far as the spacing goes between here, it's not too critical at this time. You just want to keep them together and keep them, if you look straight down from the top, each pair is basically right over top of the nail. That's how you know where they go. And the spacing between them, as we counted earlier, some will have five strands, some four. So it's not real critical. Plus, it's easy to adjust these later on. Now, I'm going to go ahead and finish wrapping the entire chair. A couple chair. of things that I want to point out. When you need to take a break or stop, you can just use a clamp to hold the material from becoming unraveled and getting loose on you. 
And I also wanted to show you what I'm working off here. I have a full spool that's on here. This wrapping that I'm doing is going to be continuous. There will be no cuts in the entire wrapping. So what I'm doing is just taking some off the spool from the outside. And this is actually on a Lazy Susan. And that's not required, but it does come in handy. Makes it a lot easier. Your number one thing you want to not have happen is for this to get tangled up while you're weaving. Because if it does, you're going to have to make a cut, which isn't the end of the world, but I prefer to not have to make cuts and add pieces in as I go. We now have wrapped all the way across the entire chair, and we're coming to the other side. We want to duplicate the pattern of having four strands on the end. So we're going to come up from the nail, just like we've always been, leaving space over here. We're going to go to the back, leave some space. We're going to go over the nail the same way that we did all the rest of them on the back. I'm going to come back to the front. We're going to go over that nail the same way as we did all the rest. It's going to be a little tight in there and you'll have to manipulate a, a bit. As it comes up you want to make sure it's not overlapping anything. Go to the back and this is going to fill in the edge by the leg. And then it's going to come back up on that side. And this can be pushed over. And we're going to go under there. And then this piece can be tacked to the side. Or again, we can do this maneuver that I personally like to do of just catching it up above and below a few nails and cut it off. Now we have totally finished wrapping it front to back. I want to visually inspect it. You can adjust, try to make your spaces somewhat be the same between every two strands. It doesn't really be critical that they are, but make sure nothing is overlapped. Make sure everything is laying where you want it to be. And we'll do the same on the back. Inspect the back. And you can take a little time and push some strands together and just tidy it up a bit and get it ready for the next step. This is the underside of the front rail. We want to find which one of these is the center. So I'm going to count in from the outer edge each nail. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And I'll do the same from this side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This is the center one, so I'm marking it with a pencil. And you can see it's also set up higher by the original weaver. That was probably to let them know without counting which one it was. All these nails can now be pounded down except the center one, so I'm going to do that. As you can see, it's not real critical that they be pounded in with all your force or might. They just have to go in a little bit, even if they just bend over. As long as they're going to continue to hold those pieces of Danish cord the rest of their life, their job is completed. We're going to do the same to the back rail. It's very obvious that that's marked as the center one. I counted it, and it is exactly the center. So we're going to pound them all down except for that one. And there we have them all pounded down except for the center one. You need a piece that's exactly 50 feet, 50 feet, and I'm going to pull that off and cut it. And you'll see how I use the Lazy Susan to help me do that. We have 50 feet laid on the floor right now. What you want to do is get both ends, put them together, and then start pulling it through your hands so that it'll stay the two ends together. And what we're doing is we're finding the middle of this piece of Danish cord. So now that is the middle. Here is the center of the 50 foot piece. We're going to put it on the nail that's in the center here that we marked with our pencil and hang it on there and then I'm going to hammer it in tight. Now I'm going to separate it because one strand will go to the right and one strand will go to the left. I'm going to start going to the left. I'm going to bring it up 
right next to the parallel strands there and I'm going to bring it down and then there's going to be a lot of pulling the strand through on this step. And I'm going to wrap it as many times as it takes to fill that space there between the next parallel strand. Each time you come up underneath, you want to make sure it's not overlapping. You don't want it doing something like this. That's not going to be a good finish here. You have to take the time to make sure. And you can always squeeze them and position them as you go or later on. This is kind of a slow process. What I do, because I've done so many of these chairs, is that I will actually wrap it around twice. And I can still pull it through and I'm going twice as fast. We now have five strands between there, which as you recall was the average for the front of the chair. So we're going to jump across and go over to the next space. In the back here, we're just going to go over on a little bit of an angle there. I'm pulling very tight. I'm keeping that very tight in there. This whole process, you want to keep it very tight. And I'll do a couple strands here so you can see how that's done. I'm always maintaining the tightness so that this doesn't become a loose wrap, but a tight wrap. I have now finished wrapping this side. I'm still holding on to the loose end. You want to make sure that everything is smooth and nothing overlapped like I showed you that one time and all your gaps are filled in. And if you have to hit it with a wedge and a hammer to make adjustments, you can do that. Now I'm going to clamp this so it will hold this last strand in place until I can We're attach. We're looking at the underside. This is the end of the piece that I want to cut off. I need to attach it there. You can do the maneuver where you go over and under on these, but it makes it really crowded later on. And so I kind of prefer to use the tack and I put it in between where there's already a little bit of a separation there to try to get it to hold. This is a very tough maneuver. A lot of times the clamp will fly off while I'm hitting. And I definitely use two nails, sometimes maybe three, just to make sure I've really captured it and it's going to hold tight. Once you're sure you have that securely attached, then you can cut it off. Now that that left side is completely filled in and attached, we've got this long piece from the center nail. We're going to wrap the right side the same exact way. And we're going to continue this all the way to the end. And then we're going to attach it on that end with tacks, just like we did the other side. We've finished wrapping this side of the front rail, and we're going to attach it to the side. But before I do that, I wanted to just cover a few things with you. One is that while I'm working these first few steps, I'm always maintaining the tension. I never am letting go of the tension. One hand or the other is holding it so that these are tight and not loose across here. If I have to stop for some reason, I just use this clamp and that holds the tension and then I can drop my material and do something else if I get called away or want to take a break. Uh, another thing that I mentioned is that on this chair I didn't have to replace any of the nails. Some of the nails on your chair more than likely will need replacing. And what will happen is when you're prying them back, is they might break right off if you've pried too far. That'll become a nail that you have to replace. When you replace the nails, you want to pull this one out, put the new nail in the same hole. The wood is very hard, and if you try to pound a nail in a new hole, you'll have a lot of trouble with a nail bending on you. 
And you can even see in these nails, a lot of them are bent from the original manufacturer putting them in and they're having trouble with it. So if you need to start one in an entirely new hole, I would pre-drill a tiny pilot hole with a drill so that the nail can go in a little bit without having to force its way into this hard wood. One more thing I wanted to mention is most chairs will have five wraps between each pair of strands. So you want to aim to get five. Once in a while you'll get six, maybe four, that's okay, but try to do five in the front. And most chairs in the back are going to have four wraps between each pair. So that's what you want to aim for. Sometimes you might have three, sometimes five. You never want to go way off and like have seven or two, but try to make it before to make it uniform. Now we're going to wrap the back. I have a 40 foot piece that I have found the center of. I'm going to hang it on the center nail right there and then I'm going to tap it down. We're going to wrap the back the same way we did the front. First thing I'm going to do is separate the strands so I don't get tangled. And I It fell off, which may happen to you, so I'm going to tap it a little tighter. And then I'm going to start wrapping this side, same way we did the front. There I have four wraps there, so I'm going to move over and start the next one. And I'm going to do four there. I'm going to continue all the way to here and attach it just like I did the front. And then we're going to start with the other side. And we're going to go four strands, four wraps in between each pair of strands all the way to this edge. And we're going to attach it there. We're going to stop now and jump to that point. Now I've finished wrapping the front and the back and I've started on the side. I attached one strand with a couple of tacks under there. You can probably see that. And if you look over here, you'll see it's all attached to the full spool. I'm going to work, I'm going to weave the entire rest of the chair without any cuts or adding any pieces. So this goes under the side left rail and I'm going to pull it up over to here and kind of just make sure there's enough to go all the way across. Then I'm going to hold it there and I'm going to start weaving. I'm going to go over the first set of four, under two, over two, repeat that pattern all the way across. I'm not pulling anything tight. It's very loose. It's very easy to do. And when I get over here, I should also be going over top of that one. Now I'm going to take the strand closest to me and I'm going to pull it down over on the left rail right up to the edge. And I'm going to pull with my right hand and just put a little tension on it. And I'm going to push it all the way up. And I, there's no stress, there's no strain. I've just done that. Then this edge is going to go underneath right up against the leg. Hopefully you can see this. I'm going to go inside and I'm going to catch it on the first nail. It's going to be pretty snug in there. And then I'm going to come around right next to it. Now that one's tight. Now I'm going to pull this one across and then just pull it up. And I don't have any severe tension on it. It's just in place. And then on this side, right next to it, I'm going to go under. And then I'm going to go up on the inside and go around the first nail that's right there. And that's going to catch it. And there's our first weaving done. Now I'm going to take a little more off of the spool, go across like I did, make sure there's enough to get all the way across, and now I'm going to weave under the first four over the next pair, under over all the way. 
and it's easy to do. There's no pressure. I'm not trying to maintain any tension. And once I get there, I'm going to take the closest strand to the front, pull it down on the left with my hand, pull it tight there, and then I'm just going to slide it up. Just kind of make sure it's up snug against that one. And then this one here I'm going to take down, go underneath, I'm going to hang it on a nail. And bring it back up and just pull out the slack and then just slide it forward so it's parallel with the next one. What I'm looking for here is no overlaps here, tight together. These basically pushed up. As you add more, it'll tighten everything together. And then I'm going to go on the other side, I'm going to do it again. Go underneath, go over a nail. You can put, you can use each nail two times, and you're going to want to do that, two times on each nail. Pull a little bit more off the spool so I have slack. Come out here in the same pattern. Now I'm going to go over the top. I'm going to repeat over, under, over, under all the way across. The same exact pattern. I pull it a little bit tight and then I pull in the one and it'll pretty much stay there and as I do that I can pull a little bit and get the rest of them tighter. I'm not putting a lot of force. I'm not really squeezing this in. I just want them to be close together. And the same thing over here. Go over it, come up underneath, catch a nail. Uh and go back. Well, I'm going to show you from the bottom side what it looks like. This is the left rail. I'm coming under. I'm going to go up and I'm going to go around this nail right here and pull it snug and then I'm going to go back and I'm going to weave the top. Now this is the right rail. I'll show you the bottom side what that looks like. I'm coming over and I go down. This nail has been used twice so I'm going to go to this open nail. Go around that and that's going to go over. And I wanted to show you this tail. This is a leftover tail from the front weaving that I just left lay there and I kind of held it with a nail right here and I'm catching it each time I go by and that's going to help hold that tail. It's also been tacked It'll just make everything that much more secure. When I get near the end, I'll take it off of there so it can be completely caught up by my weaving. I've been weaving the chair. It's about half done now. I'm going to do a couple rows without saying anything, just so you can watch how I do it. One tip that I wanted to tell you about, I'll show you that in just a second. When I pull it across and I have enough here, I put my left thumb in the loop and that keeps it from tangling. I keep my left thumb there as I'm pulling it through. If you focus on my left thumb, you'll see that. And it keeps these from crossing over, which they're going to want to do a lot. That's just one tip that will help you from that happening. Now I mentioned that I'm going to weave this entire seat without any cuts. You can see in the spool over here, I'm still working off the continual entire long piece. You may find that you can't do that. You might get tangled or you might come to an end and you have to make a splice. So to make a splice, I'll show you what you can do. 
I don't need a splice, so I'm not going to actually do it. So I'll demonstrate with this short piece. All you need to do is come up somewhere wherever you're working with two pieces and put tacks in each one, maybe two tacks, one in each one, and then you can continue weaving. And if you have to end one, you probably have two that are tacked there, and then your new one, and you would attach them there, and then you can keep going. The chair is almost complete. We're near the back end, just a few strands to go. It's going to get very tight on you here, and it's going to be a little harder to weave this through. So I'll show you a method that I use. Get my hand underneath, and just do one at a time. It's kind of slow and tedious, but it, it is a way to do it. A lot of times while you're doing this, as you're pulling it through behind you, it's going to twist on you. Mine isn't. But because I'm using both hands over here, sometimes behind me it does twist. So at this point, you would have to straighten that twist out. On this particular one, it worked okay. It gets tighter and tighter back here, and a tool will help you. This tack puller or a screwdriver or something else that will help you to pull it up as you go. You might be able to still get your hand underneath. You just need something that will help you. The last row, which is the next one, is even harder. It would be nice if a chair got easier as you got near the end, but unfortunately this style of chair gets harder at the end. The good news is you're almost done. You can see there how I just twisted on me. That'll happen quite often in this step. So I'll fix that while I'm right there. This one here is always a challenge to get in. I'm going to pull it through and come up from underneath. I got it through. Now at this point, I've got room for one more row. I can't really see to hook that nail, so I'm going to turn the chair up to hook this on the nail on this side. Just by flipping it over, it's easy access and I can see. And I'm going to use this nail because I'm using two on every nail. You want to make sure you use two on every nail, three once in a while if you can do it. And that will ensure that you have enough space at the end. Now I'm holding the tension with this hand so I don't come off the nail. And then we're going to start our final row. This is the last row. It's very tight. I'm using a method that I kind of call sewing. I just stick it way down in, and then I have a big piece that I can grab underneath and stick through the next. It's getting all twisted behind me. I'm not even going to worry about that until the end. My main goal here is to get this piece woven in there, and then I'll fix it after that. Okay, now it's in all the way. This is the piece that I want to be on the left, so I'm going to follow it across. Here's my first twist. I'm going to fix that. And I think it's okay now from there. Yeah, yeah we've got it. Now I'm going to turn it over again because I can't see the nail to hang it on. tight across there and there's the finished seat I'm going to turn this side over bring that last one up 
And at this point, I'm on that nail. And what I generally do is I'll pull it out here further and I'll put a couple tacks in it. And I'll also use that nail when I pound it down to catch it. Now I've put two tacks in there and I'm going to cut it off. This is the other end of my long strand that did the entire seat. Now our last step is to drive in the nails that we used there. So I'm just going to lightly tap each one. Some may go straight in, some might just bend over. Doesn't really matter as long as they're holding the Danish cord. We will also do the other side, which I've already done. So then we'll flip it over and you can see the completed chair. And if you take and inspect it, there are no pieces of Danish cord that are laying on top of each other. There's no unsightly gaps. You're going to want to check all four sides. Actually, you want to be checking that long before now because it's hard to go back and repair anything. And there's our completed chair.